Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you with a smile on your face, joy in your heart, and love in your soul for Jesus. Now we're continuing our study through the book of Ephesians. Today we are halfway through chapter 5 and we're going to address a very practical topic. And what I mean by that is oftentimes our Christianity is best performed outside the home. And yes, I say performed because it seems like there is a lot of pretense and the way that we know there's pretense is because we treat our family and those closest to us much differently than those we do outside the home. I mean, we talk to our parents differently than we talk to other senior adults. We talk to our brother, our sister, our husband, or our wife differently than we do other people. Now, in some ways, this isn't that bad because we have a closer relationship with them. So we can lighten our guard a little bit. We can loosen up and we can speak to them more openly and less articulately. Is that even a word? With less articulation. In other words, we're not focusing upon as much as how we say what we say. We're simply communicating the message in the easiest way possible. Where with others, we're more refined in what we say. We think about how we're going to say what we say. And we put more thought into it. And again, I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing that we can communicate with those differently that are closest to us. But the Bible teaches us in passages like the one we're going to address today that we need to be more on guard with those that we are more open to. Because as we have opened ourselves, sometimes we are going to say things that in second thought, we're going to wish we had not said in that particular way. And it's important that we communicate our message, but we need to say what we mean, mean what we say, and say it without being mean. And so as Paul has been addressing with this young Ephesus church, this home fellowship, the importance of our practical everyday Christianity in the eyes of others, specifically the pagan world around us, and we are given very much attention in how we deal with others, sometimes we forget the importance of those we deal with behind closed doors. And oftentimes the emotions that have been bottled up within us because we have been biting our tongue all day long, when we come home, we unleash the fury upon those that are absolutely undeserving. And so as we look at this passage today, I want you to consider how you carry yourself in your home, whether your parents unto your children, whether your children unto your parents, whether it's a husband unto the wife, the wife unto the husband, a brother to a brother, a brother to a sister, or maybe even how you deal with and speak to your friends. Because true Christianity begins in the home and spreads outward. And that's the message of what we're going to look at today. So let's begin in Ephesians chapter 5, and let's start at verse 21. Now it says, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now Paul could have stopped right there because that covers everything. Submit yourselves one to another. Husband, submit to your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. Children, submit to your parents. Parents, submit to your children. Workers, submit to your bosses. Bosses, submit to your workers. And all of us, as children of God, submit to your Father who is in heaven and his holy word which he has given us to rule our lives by. So Paul has said everything in one sentence. But to make sure that there's no misunderstanding, he begins, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now let me back up and say just for a moment in the... Examples that I gave, wives to husbands, husbands to wives, bosses to employees, parents to children, each of us submit at different times in different ways. 
But just as we expect, for instance, our children to apologize to us, when we have wronged our children, we should apologize to them. And so be it with the husband, the wife, the wife, the husband, the employer to the employee, and so on. So he begins by saying, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as you would submit unto the Lord. And when women hear this, for some reason, it arises a rebellion within them because they do not want to be submissive. They do not want to see their husbands differently than them. They want to see themselves as equal. But the Bible clearly says here, there is no equality in that marriage relationship. Wives are to submit as unto their Lord. For the husband, Paul says in verse 23, is the head of the wife. Exactly like Christ, Jesus is the head of the church. So rather than focus the attention on the wife in this passage, really the attention is upon the husband because he has the greater accountability and he has the greater responsibility. Now, just as the church, the body of the living God is subject unto Christ, so let their wives be to their own husbands in everything. Doesn't matter how your husband responds, you simply as a wife have a duty to obey scripture. And if you're obedient to the scripture, the Lord will bless you for doing so. Now, Paul says, husbands, before you begin clapping and shouting amen, you are to love your wife even as Christ loves his church. Now, I just want to, if you're a husband, I want you to stop and ponder and think on that. Think about that throughout this whole day. You are to love your wife as Christ loved his church. That is a high goal to strive to attain to. Christ isn't pushy. Christ isn't forceful. Christ isn't demanding. Christ isn't unkind. Christ isn't lazy. And nor should you be to your wife husband in the way that you speak to her, in the way that you treat her. You are to love your wife as Jesus himself loves his church and gave himself for it. And he gave himself for the church so that he might sanctify, set it apart, and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And Jesus did this so that he may present it to himself, a glorious church, having no spot, no wrinkle, but that she, his bride, should be holy and without blemish. And so as we see the example that Christ gave us in offering himself to his church, so ought men to love their wives as their own body. For no man hates his own flesh, he nourishes it, he cherishes it. And so nourish your wife, husbands, cherish your wives, Not just in word, but in deed. Prove your love by your actions. Well, now that Paul has addressed the husband and wife, he moves to the children. And he says in chapter 6, verse 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and mother. Respect your father and mother. Give reverence unto your father and mother. They love you and are trying to keep you from harm from things that you may think will be pleasurable today, but will cause you great pain in the future. And let me just say, this isn't only for your father and mother, but this is for your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, your Sunday school teachers, all those who are in a place of authority who love the Lord Jesus and are trying to guide you properly. And fathers, your job, your role in the family is to teach your children. Not to just tell them what they can and cannot do, but to get them to understand why it is they're not to do the things they're not to do, and why it is they need to do the things that you are teaching and encouraging them to do. So be careful not to provoke them to wrath, driving them away, causing a wedge in your relationship, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, in the word of God. Teach them why and not only what. Servants, you too are to be obedient to your masters, to your bosses. 
and you're to do so with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart. Just as you would serve the Lord Jesus, you're to serve your bosses. And don't do this in the appearance of men as men pleasers, but do this as servants of Christ, as slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. And if you do this, you're going to give 100% of your attention to your job at hand because you're doing your work unto the Lord, not unto men. And finally, in verse 9, he says, not to overlook you masters, you need to do the same things unto them. Just as you expect your servants to do unto you, so do you need to do unto your servants. You need to treat them with love, with kindness, with respect, with loyalty. You need to overlook the petty differences, and you need to respect the work they do for you, and honor the loyalty that they show unto you. For you too have a master in heaven, and just as there is no respect of persons with him, there should be no respect of persons with you. You shouldn't show favoritism to some employees over other employees. You need to treat them all the same, all courteously, all lovingly, and all kindly. And we're going to close there today, friends. And, and I don't have a lot to add to this because Paul has been very clear in his message. Let me just say, focus all of your time and your attention on your Christian relationship with Jesus inside the home. Watch how it changes the temperature. Watch how it changes the atmosphere. And because love and grace is being experienced in the home, because surrender and submission is being experienced in the home, you will only take it outside the home when you go. So remember, your relationship, your identity as a Christian, the way you can gauge it and measure it is who you are in the home. When you let all of your guard down, you might want to reconsider because that's where you need your guard the most. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful again that you're with us. I pray the Lord Jesus will bless you throughout this day, that you will hunger and thirst after righteousness, that you will be quickened in your spirit, and that you will love the Lord Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, putting behind you the things of this world and casting all your focus and attention upon him, his kingdom, his will, and his way. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.